Isaiah Thomas is 5'9". Boban Marjanovic is 7'3". Kevin Durant, well actually nobody knows how tall Kevin Durant is. They say he's 6'9", but he's taller than DeMarcus Cousins, who's 6'11". The shorter you are, the faster you can be. The taller you are, you're longer and stronger. That's why every single height has its own advantage and its own best player. Let's begin with 5'8". Wait, wait, wait. For some reason, if you're not subscribed, you're crazy. Please fix that. Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. We're trying to hit 1.6 million today. Also, hit that notification bell to join Nodi Gang. So every time I upload a fire video, you're not going to miss it. 5'8". Wait a minute. There's no 5'8 players in the NBA. Ever since Nate Robinson retired, the tallest has been 5'9". Where are the short players going? 5'9". My guy, Isaiah Thomas. Yes. After all the adversity, he has proven himself to be the best 5'9 player. His competition. Oh, let me tell you about the competition. Um, nobody. He's the only 5'9 player in the NBA. We still love you, Isaiah. 5'10". Tyler Eulis. I have no idea how, but there's no other 5'10 players in the league. I thought there were like 20 of them. Tyler Eulis was not that bad, by the way. No competition. 5'11". Oh, this is where it gets spicy. Really, really spicy. This is where it gets good. Frank Mason. There's no other 5'11 player in the league. Six feet tall. We got Fred Van Fleet from the Raptors. Patty Mills, one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And drum roll. CP3. Chris Paul, yeah, it's obviously Chris Paul. No competition. 16 points a game, eight assists. All of those were easy. Starting right now, every single one in the rest of the video is highly competitive. 6-1. Our contestants are Kemba Walker, Lou Williams, Eric Bledsoe, Mike Conley, Kyle Lowry. This is literally the group of the most underrated point guards. Is it a coincidence that all the underrated point guards are all 6'1"? Maybe they're all underrated because of their height. First things first, let's take out Kyle Lowry. Only 15 points a game. Let's also take out Eric Bledsoe. All these guys are averaging over 20 points a game. But you know what? We're going with the guy averaging 25 points. Kemba Walker. Or should I say, the Charlotte Hornets. Because he literally is their entire team. 6-2. Oh, we got some rookies in here. It's a little rookie battle. Except not Luka Doncic, because Luka Doncic's not 6-2. We got Trey Young, Colin Sexton, and Jeff Teague. Whoa, why is Jeff Teague there, Greg? Considering he's been splitting minutes with Derrick Rose the entire season, putting up 12 points and 8 assists is extremely impressive. But let's kick him out because these other two guys are on another level. Colin Sexton, nobody's talking about him because, I mean, let's be real, who talks about the Cavaliers anymore? But let me tell you, Colin Sexton is averaging 17 points a game, bro. Those are some all-star numbers. But Trey Young is averaging 19 points, four rebounds, eight assists. In the last two months, he's been the best rookie of the year. So we're going with Trey Young. But you know what? Trey Young and Colin Sexton, if you want to be in this conversation next year, don't grow. Because 6'3. Oh, 6'3 is the most talented height in the entire NBA. Russell Westbrook, uh-huh. Kyrie Irving, mm-hmm. Damian Lillard, mm-hmm. Donovan Mitchell. Oh yeah, you thought that was crazy? Oh wait, I'm not done. Stephen Curry, oh boy. Literally all of the best guards in the league are exactly 6'3". Why are they all 6'3"? It's a little interesting, don't you think? Now let me begin by saying these players are all amazing, but Donovan Mitchell, get out of here, bro. Kyrie Irving, one of the best scoring guards ever. We're gonna have to get you out. I'm sorry, we gotta kick him out, bro. Damian Lillard, 
26 points a game. One of the highest scores in the league. But still, we gotta get him out. This is coming down to Russell Westbrook and Stephen Curry. Westbrook just put up the second 2020-20 game in NBA history. He is averaging a triple-double. But Stephen Curry is averaging 28 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists. And he's been doing all of this with blurry vision. He just got his eyes fixed. With all my heart, I want to pick Russell Westbrook, and I don't want to be biased. Stephen Curry's percentages are a lot higher. His three-point percentage is a lot higher. I'm gonna go with Stephen Curry. Can I get a like on this video for me not being biased? 6 4. Oh, you thought it got easier. No, every single one is crazy right now. Our options are Victor Oladipo, Jamal Murray, John Wall, Buddy Heal, and Drew Holiday. You guys know how much I love Victor Oladipo. He's one of the best two way players in the league, but he's injured for the rest of the season, so we're gonna take him out for now. Buddy Healed is averaging 21 points a game. Oh yeah, but you know what's even crazier? The fact that he's still not the best 6'4 player. Get him out of here, get him out of here, coach. Jamal Murray, 18 points a game, young guy, love him, but get him out of here, coach. John Wall is putting up 21 points a game, nine assists, but his shooting percentages are not that good. Three point percentages, not that good. His defense this year compared to other years, I'll let you guess. You know what? I'll just do it. Not that good! But Drew Holiday, the best defensive point guard in the league, 21 points, eight assists, more rebounds, higher three point shooting, higher overall percentage. Drew Holiday, you have been drafted. 6 5. James Harden. Bradley, Beal, Zach, Levine, oh, I almost forgot, D'Angelo Russell, one of the best players this season. So the first player we're taking off this list is Zach Levine, because he scores a lot, but not very efficiently. And I take efficiency very seriously. D'Angelo Russell, unbelievable year, but get out of here, coach. We got to narrow it down to these two guys. The difference is, one of them averages 26 points a game, the other 36 points a game. So, uh, yeah, that's why we're taking James Harden. Come on, bro. 6-6. Six, six. We got Lonzo Ball. As soon as he got hurt, the Lakers season went downhill. He's one of the most impactful young players in the league. But his competition, scoring 27 points a game, 7 assists, one of the most lethal shooters in the entire NBA, Devin Booker! And more impressive than all of those statistics, he beat me in a one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody beats me in a one-on-one. -on -one. All right, all right, enough. Six, seven, uh oh Oh, it's about to get spicy. Our options are Luka Doncic. Clay Thompson, DeMar DeRozan, oh wait a minute! The guy DeMar DeRozan switched places with, Kawhi Leonard! Isn't that crazy? It comes down to DeMar and Kawhi Leonard. The rivalry that they got. DeMar DeRozan, 21 points a game, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Now Kawhi Leonard doesn't get as many assists, isn't as much of a playmaker, but he's more of a pure scorer. 27.7 rebounds. And let's say the scoring is equal. It's a tie. The tiebreaker is Kawhi Leonard is one of the best defensive players in NBA history. And that's why he's the best 6'7 player. 6'8. Jimmy Buckets and LeBron James. Okay, so Jimmy Butler is a superstar, one of the best defensive players in the world. Now, some people might say he's better because LeBron James apparently is washed. I disagree. LeBron James, 28 points, eight assists, eight rebounds, is still LeBron James. But you know what? We forgot about that one player, the replacement for LeBron James. Sadie Osman, the best 6'8". Okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, it's just a joke, it's just a joke. Don't get mad at me. The hardest decision of the video 
is next. 6ix9ine, Paul George, and Kevin Durant. Some of you might be thinking, Greg, are you about to be a biased Thunder fan? I'm not being biased anything. I speak the facts. Defense! We all know Paul George is one of the best defenders. He's the better defender of the two. Offense! Kevin Durant, 26.5 points a game. Paul George, 28 points a game. Lately, I have been showing Kevin Durant a lot more respect than usual. But you know what? Paul George is the best 6'9 player in the NBA. I'm showing my man some love right here. Also, is Kevin Durant really 6'9? I mean, come on, bro. Look at him next to DeMarcus Cousins. He literally is seven feet tall. Grow up. 6'10. Balake Griffin! Ben Simmons, ooh, two Rookie of the Years. Anthony Davis, three Rookie of the Years. Who is it gonna be? Now, Ben Simmons is almost like a Russell Westbrook, but we're gonna take him out. Blake Griffin is putting up 25 points a game. Blake Griffin has a higher three-point percentage than Kevin Durant. So Anthony Davis barely playing. Is that enough for me to pick Block A? No, of course not. Anthony Davis scores 26 points, 12 rebounds. He's one of the biggest athletic freaks the NBA has ever seen, ever. My pick is Anthony Davis. 6-11. Giannis on. Dead to compo. Look at Giannis finishing my sentences. DeMarcus Cousins, Andre Drummond, and LaMarcus Aldridge. You might be wondering why LaMarcus Aldridge is here. He's having one of the best seasons of his career. He deserves to be here. And now he deserves to leave. <laughs> we, just had to, we just had to show him a little bit of respect. To Marcus Cousins, you might have the talent to be the best 6'11 player, but you don't have enough scoring opportunity on the Warriors. So we gotta, we gotta get him out of here, coach. So it comes down to Giannis and Andre Drummond. And even though he doesn't get as many rebounds, 27 points, 13 rebounds, 6 assists, 58% percentage, one of the highest player efficiency ratings ever! Giannis on Tetokounmpo. Ha, we couldn't finish it this time. The greatest guy that I hear alive, man. Love you too, Giannis. Seven feet. Oh, this might be my favorite. Carl Anthony Towns, Nikola Vucevic, Nikola Jokic. Oh, you see what I did there? And Steven Adams. As much as I love Aquaman, He's just one level under the rest of these guys. So for now, we're going to take him out. I talk about Nikola Vucevic almost every video. He's so underrated. 21 points, 12 rebounds, unbelievable player. We're going to take him out because these other two guys are MVP candidates. Carl Anthony Towns. Ever since Jimmy Butler left, Carl Anthony Towns has been one of the best centers, not just at seven feet, but in the league. But you know what? We're going to take him out. It's a really close race between him and Nikola Jokic. But you know what? You know what? It doesn't matter. Kick out Nikola Jokic. What? Because we got Joel Embiid! Oh, you think I forgot? 28 points, 14 rebounds. I don't even know what to say. But we all know he's the best 7-foot player and probably the best center in the league. 7-1! There are so many good 7-1 players. Rudy Gobert, DeAndre Ayton, and Marc Gasol. Usually Marc Gasol would be in the conversation, but he's having a down year. Maybe he's getting a little bit old, Mark. DeAndre Ayton is putting up numbers nobody even knows because nobody watches the Suns. Rudy Gobert averages less points, but he has 13 rebounds, and he is the most efficient scorer in the league. DeAndre Ayton, maybe in a few years, because you got a bright future, but for right now, it's Rudy Gobert. 7-2. You thought 7-1 had good players? Welcome to 7-2, where we got Medri and nobody else. Yeah. <laughs> there is no competition. 7-3. Boban Marjanovic, a legend. 7-4. Lost and unbound! Last video, I did the best NBA teams if every player was drafted one pick later. If you didn't see it yet, go watch that right now. I'll put it somewhere on the screen for you to click. That video was crazy.